Hey everybody, it's Jamie Hart from the Marvel Database. We're coming back at you one more time for episode of 14. Today we're talking about Heroes Who Kill. Um, joining me are Mike, Elena, and Rab. Uh, we're going to be talking about lots of fun things, so let's just jump right into it. Um, Heroes Who Kill. So obviously uh, there's a you know spectrum of, of uh, morality in both the Marvel, DC, and all the various uh, comic book universes. And uh, sometimes heroes are pressed to do things that they don't want to do or sometimes uh, they, they have to do based on the situation. Um, and we want to today explore uh, what drives them, what's their motivation, and, and ultimately what are the results of that. So it's a little bit different than our take uh, in an earlier episode about good guys who become bad and bad guys who become good. So um, let's uh, let's talk about uh, um, let's talk about Wonder Woman. So uh, there was a great example of uh, uh, you know going back a little ways. So Wonder Woman, who's historically been known as a you know a, a brave, ruthless fighter, but not someone who kills for fun. Um, but uh, an example uh, where she actually kills someone. Uh, Alana, do you remember that situation? Can you tell us a little bit about it and what happened there? Uh, yeah, uh, Wonder Woman ended up, uh, during Infinite Crisis, I believe, killing Maxwell Lord. Um, he, Maxwell Lord was mind-controlling Superman and kicking everyone's butt with him. And she caught him with her lasso of truth, and he told her that as soon as he was released, he would just mind-control Superman again to kill anyone who could get in his way. So she was in a situation where she had to think quickly and decide what the, the best course of action was, and she ended up uh, breaking his neck. Um, and I, you know, this is, I think, a really good example of the, the hero being pressed uh, to do something quickly. Um, she didn't... Um, she made a decision, she made a call, and, uh, and she ended up killing the, the, one of the big bad guys of that story. Has he made his way back onto... Uh... The panels yet? The pages? Is he back? Not really, no. Well, he was uh, brought back by White Lanterns. Yeah, he came back for Brightest Day, but he's not back post-Flashpoint. Oh, okay, fair enough. And so what were the ramifications like? Um, did she suffer any fallout? Was there uh, you know, ill will towards her from some of the other uh, members of the JL? Wasn't it recorded? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was broadcast everybody. Yeah, like it was broadcast. The whole world saw it. So she got arrested, actually. She had to give up her uh, status as the uh, ambassador for Themyscira, and she got and people reacted to it negatively. Obviously, I mean, some people were agreed with her, but the uh, Batman in particular was not happy about it, and he uh, he said which I think is going to be important later, there's always a choice, he says, which she didn't think was true, and obviously because she snapped his neck, but <laughs> it, it begs a question that like, we as readers have to answer, like, is there always a choice? Maybe not. So, so that uh, you bring up an interesting point because Batman himself is not without uh, blood on his hands. If I'm not mistaken, didn't he kill Darkseid? Yeah, but Darkseid's <laughs> a thing. Darkseid's an alien, okay? So that, that's not the same as killing humans, right? Is that, is that how that works? Because, I mean, he's not going to kill the Joker. And, you know, oh, they're, didn't they're not... he? Didn't he? End of uh, Killing Joke? Maybe, maybe not. Like maybe. Yeah, yeah, but the end of that, first of all, is maybe, and secondly, wasn't originally intended to be canon. Sure. Um, but I mean, there's a, I've seen the question on the internet so many times. Uh, how responsible is Batman for the deaths of everyone that the Joker killed when he uh, intercedes and stops anyone from killing him? Mm hmm. But that, that question always like drives me nuts because I'm like. No, he's not responsible for what the Joker does. That's like blaming the victim, even though he's not the victim in this case. But if you make Batman responsible for the killings that the Joker does, that removes responsibility from the Joker. So I well, it's think... Like, it's like blaming the police for uh, you know, letting a bad guy out after he served 25 years. He served his time, goes out, and does another bad deed. It's like, well... 
if if the police had have just kept him in for another two years or for the rest of his life, uh, that bad deed would have been prevented. So you can't blame the police for that. But right. can you blame Arkham's shitty security? Oh yeah, they're to blame. <laughs> oh yeah, With security. They have security now. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I think everybody else knew that they didn't have security. That must be off panel because I've never seen that on panel before. <laughs> Bruce Wayne has contributed significant amounts to their security. For obvious reasons. <laughs> All right, so uh, we, we we talked about sort of um, the lack of choice that Wonder Woman had, but what about? Uh, what about killing versus allowing to die? Like, I mean, it's it's sort of another trope, if you will, uh, where the the good guys not necessarily would never shoot someone, especially in the back or anything like that. But well, let's say if you were falling and I didn't want to, you know, catch you, that's is that really killing or is that just allowing to die? I, there's a, an example, I, I believe, of uh, Mockingbird who was off in some time traveling misadventure in the 1800s uh, and was kidnapped by. Um, uh, Phantom Rider, I think it was, and and so you know, back and forth goes on, and then at some point they're battling on the edge of a cliff, as they always, as tends to to happen in comics, and uh, he falls over the edge, and is kind of reaching up, and she's like, Nah, I'm good, see ya, <laughs> and he falls to his death. So, um, what about what about that? Are there any other notable examples, and and what uh, what sort of the morality of allowing someone to die when you totally have it within your power to stop them? My favorite example of that. Uh, is an old comic, uh, Captain America number two, uh, or maybe number one, the first appearance of the Red Skull, where the Red Skull uh, injects himself with some kind of syringe full of poison, and Bucky is like, oh my god, Captain, we have to call the police, and the Captain stops him, and is like, no, 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 it's fine. And, like, and they walk away, end of story. <laughs> But I mean, that's that a lot. <laughs> it happens a lot in Golden Age stuff because the pre Comics Code Authority, where people, it's, in fact, it's the way that Disney kills off a lot of its bad guys. It's just like somebody's gonna fall. Oh, maybe I won't save them. Nah. <laughs> but uh, an example of that that comes to mind is uh, Nightwing and Blockbuster. There was uh, the. Uh, early 2000s, uh, around 2004, I think, in the same sort of build-up that was going on during Wonder Woman having to uh, kill Max Lord. It's, everything was ramping up in the DC Universe, and Nightwing in particular was trying to bring down this crime boss called Blockbuster. Meanwhile, he was entangled with some crazy Latina who was all for killing bad guys, and then as he's about to take down Blockbuster, she shoots Blockbuster in the face, and he's like, I didn't stop you. My life is... What is this? What's happening to me? So, and that has some pretty icky ramifications at the end of that issue, but the whole... Uh, it, beg it brings you to ask, like, why... Why does he feel responsible for that if... He didn't pull the trigger. Is he the killer? Like, does he kill by not pulling the trigger, or does or does he kill by allowing her to pull the trigger, or is he totally not responsible because he didn't? There you go. What are your, what are your thoughts on that, Mike? You know what? Like, I think a nice lot shirt, of heroes. I just got to stop you and say, "Nice shirt. I love your shirt." Thank you. Um, I have to say that a lot of these heroes, they feel that they got to take all this responsibility on themselves for, you know the, like, things that other people do. I mean, it goes back to that conversation about Batman and Joker. Like, is Batman responsible for what Joker does? And, like, realistically, no. Like, Nightwing situation, you were not responsible for that situation. Like, she pulled the trigger. You did not. You are, like, an outstanding individual who does not commit to that level of, like, villainry, essentially. Um... But 
I mean, at the same time, it gives them a real level of humanity because it shows that they, you know, they care, you know. I, they, I would never have killed this person. I can't believe that I let you kill this person. It's just, like, on one side, it works. On the other side, I'm like, seriously, suck it up, buttercup. So that, that you bring up an interesting point, actually. Uh, I think it was uh, Colossus that killed Proteus. Uh, uh, long story short, uh, in... Uh, you know, the story, I guess, Colossus felt really bad about it for, like, months and months to come, and it's sort of this, and I, I'd call it, it goes as far as to call it its its own trope where good guys feel bad about things outside their control or, or you know, uh, really, you know, situations that were largely not their fault. Um, you know, is that, is it too much? Is it, like, are we beating this horse to death with having our heroes just feel shitty all the time? Like, how do, how do you feel about that? Like, there's no break. They never get a break. That's that's kind of my favorite thing, though. It's not not in every case, but say uh, an example would be in Hellblazer. John Constantine has to he doesn't have to, but he decides to shoot the man who killed his father, who also killed a bunch of families. But he's a serial murderer, and he decides to shoot this serial murderer. And then after he does that, he feels guilty about killing somebody because he really technically did kill somebody in cold blood. And so he gets drunk and starts feeling really sorry for himself and becomes an alcoholic. And that's my favorite thing, is when heroes, like, totally lose all sense of, like, propriety and just get drunk and sad all the time. <laughs> Especially John Constantine. But when characters do that, that's my favorite thing. But someone like in Nightwing's case, he sort of does a contrived kind of, ah, oh, I'm going to be bad now. I'm playing the edge, which it didn't really suit the character for me at the time. So it seems like it depends on how it's handled, but the I like it when they go nuts. That's my, that's my statement on this matter. <laughs> One of my classic moments that this kind of, like, falls into, and it doesn't involve actually anybody killing each other, but... Um, like, back in the day, Magneto pulled all the adamantium out of Wolverine's body via the wounds on Asteroid M, and Professor Xavier lost his shit and just mind-wiped him. And the outcome of that was, in the end, Onslaught, because of the, like, just the guilt and the, the issues that Professor Xavier was feeling mixed with kind of the, the, the like, cross of joining his mind with Magneto's form this super villain called Onslaught and I thought that was like wonderful because he kind of like at the same time of feeling that he needed to do it he held a lot of that in like with the like that was huge like he just reached in and off goes Magneto like that's a big deal for Xavier because he's not one to abuse his powers in any way so I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> Not one to abuse his powers, you say. Okay, so <laughs> depending on who's writing him, how long it's been, he randomly abuses his powers. But you know what I mean. Uh, okay, so um, we've talked about uh, not having a choice. Um, we've talked about killing versus allowing to die. What about under the influence? Um, there've been an, I mean, this kind of borders on our earlier topic of, um, you know, good guys who go bad. But what about uh, situations where, um, you know, uh, an example? I think Daredevil killed Bullseye under the influence of the hand and things like that. Like when the situation came about that uh, Daredevil ended up killing um, Bullseye, he was being followed by a whole bunch of heroes, and they all saw it go down, um, if I'm not mistaken, back in uh, that whole... Um, shoot, I can't remember the name of the storyline. But, um, like, how much was that actually Matt, like, doing the deed? Because there was a whole lot of history between the two of those characters, and eventually, like along the lines of Batman and Joker, something was going to give, and it seemed that this was the issue, that he was going to end up killing um, 
Bullseye. So hold that thought for a second. Actually, we're out of time for this episode. Um, we're going to pick up right where we left off. So leave some comments in the uh, area below for us. You know, YouTube comments, how filthy they get. Uh, leave some comments. Let us know what you think of the episode. And then join us in the extra scenes. Uh, we'll see you in just a few seconds. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.